Hi guys, Greg from NerdWorks here, and today we're going to be looking at Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. I finally got a chance to play it. I'm generally excited about this game. For, I didn't read any reviews, didn't watch any other gameplay. I just got it a few days ago. I'm going to play. I played through it. A general Resident Evil fan right here, give my honest opinion about the game. So let's jump right into it. You guys must be the new Delta team. Report. Now let's get into the story. You play the role of an Umbrella Spec Ops member tasked to retrieve the G-Virus sample from Birkin. You rendezvous with Hunk and join him as he tries to escape with the sin. Now, I'm a sucker for nostalgia, and this was one of my favorite parts of the game, shortly after the Nemesis mission, which I won't give any spoilers away. After you escape with the sample, your team is then assigned to go back into Raccoon City to clean up the mess that Birkin left behind. The story is simple, easy to follow, and you run into many familiar faces along the way. However, the story lacks any sorts of substance or meaning. Go here, kill a bunch of enemies, move on to the next checkpoint. Easy money. Now, I love the Resident Evil franchise, and even though I enjoyed the story, it could have been better. Dipping into the rich world of Resident Evil, I expected more, especially since they're in the Resident Evil 2 timeline. But more or less, I enjoyed it, even though it was simplistic. Let's talk about the graphics. The graphics in Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City are good. Lighting looks great, zombies stagger and moan like they should, and the environments absolutely scream zombie apocalypse. I mean, my personal favorite being the outdoor city streets of Raccoon City. They look fantastic. Bravo. This game does a fantastic job of capturing that Resident Evil essence, as far as environments go. And one of the most noticeable things that I picked up while playing this game is they actually put stuff that was in the Resident Evil movie into the game. So they literally took something that was in a movie based on a game and put that thing that was based on a game from a movie into a game. It's freaking crazy. Now let's talk about the mechanics. Now it's your basic recon s third person shooter. So you snap to cover, you aim down the sights, reload, run, dodge, melee, all that good stuff. But the two biggest gripes I have about the mechanics in this game so far is the dodge mechanic, which just seems to be a joke. I mean, it's not a dodge. It's a fall. And I've only used it, I think, a couple of times to avoid a, a particular boss that I won't ruin for anybody. Other than that, it's a death wish to do it online, and I would not recommend using that mechanic at all. The other mechanic is the infamous knockdown mechanic, which has caused me to almost break my controller num numerous times. When you get hit by a strong enemy or an explosive device, it causes your character to get knocked down, and it takes him a few seconds to get up. This is very agitating, as I died multiple times as an enemy was wailing on me, but I could not get up to react because I kept getting knocked down the second I stood up. I hate games that have this kind of mechanic, especially for a shooter action game. It's kind of inexcusable, and I wish it wasn't in it. But I digress. Let's get into the classes of the game, shall we? They have Assault, Field Scientist, Demolition, Recon, etc, etc. Each one of these classes has five abilities, two passive and three active. Both the passive ones are active at all times, and then you get to choose one of the three to take you into battle, via campaign or online. Each have their own special perks and advantages. My personal favorite is the Field Scientist, with the ability to change zombies into Crimson Head allies. And that's something I completely spaced out on. There are actually Crimson Head zombies in this game. How cool is that? I have not seen a Crimson Head zombie since the Resident Evil for the GameCube. God, it's so cool that they put that in there. I digress, back on track. You can unlock these abilities by getting experience by killing zombies via online or campaign, or completing missions with experience points as you level up to progress, of course. It's a fun mechanic, and it keeps you going. It makes you want to upgrade these abilities more and more as they get more and more effective the higher level they are. Now for the main course of this game, the online. I'm going to go over what's good about the online course. Fast and decent matchmaking ahead. Quick to join battles, quick to play, it was a lot of fun. The, the gameplay itself with the zombies and the hunters and the, and the, the mutants running around is, all, is a ton of fun. Having to worry about hunters and Mr. X's and zombies grab you while you're shooting at an enemy player adds a ton of depth to the gameplay. Uh, the powers, like I said, just like in the campaign, add a ton of variety to the online. All the environments are fun to play and are very reminiscent of the Resident Evil franchise, the way they look, feel, sound. And there's just something about turning a zombie into a crimson head and watching it tear apart your enemy to pieces is just so gratifying. 
Now for the bad. I experienced so much online lag. Literally, about half the matches I played were unplayable. They were just very unresponsive. Tapping grenade buttons wouldn't throw a grenade. Bullets not recognizing people teleported all over the place, but the game appeared to be running smoothly, but it was not. Bad, bad, bad lag. The knockdown mechanic. My god, do I hate this knockdown mechanic. It becomes so bad to the point when you see an enemy, both people back up and throw grenades at each other because that's the most effective way to kill someone. And when you get knocked down, uh, you can literally get knocked down and have an enemy stare standing over you, firing point blank into your face as you get up for what seems like an eternity to recover from a grenade throw. That's one of the bad things. The bugs. Oh my god, so many online bugs. Invisible walls spawning in midair so I couldn't move. <laughs> Enemies spawning in walls and unable to get into the battle. It's really bad, and it's too bad that all these things got surpassed during Q&A during the final development of the game because they had a really interesting game here into all these bugs. Those were the bugs I ran into constantly. There were other bugs that I ran into once or twice that were really bad. I even had my console freeze once during a match matchmaking session, which is pretty inexcusable for a game of this caliber. The online would be fun if it wasn't for all the bugs, to be honest, K kids. It would be so much fun without all the bugs. It's super hard to recommend Operation Raccoon City to someone who's not a Resident Evil fan. Hell, I would only recommend it if you had three other friends that can play with you through the campaign and online. The amount of bugs, the glitches, just the, the unpolishedness of this game is really bad. That's why I regrettably, very regrettably, have to give this game a 6 out of 10. Thanks you guys for watching, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll give you guys more reviews, more gameplays, and more content. Come on! Birkin injected himself with the G-Virus. There's nothing you can do! Get out of here and make a full report to management! What are you doing? I lost the sample. I'm going back for it. <laughs>